Hi everyone, my name is Lara Hussein and I'm the co-founder of The Weight Lab. And today I'd like to talk to you about a topic that is very dear and important to my heart and to my business. And this is food waste and what we can do from our homes, from our communities, offices to reduce it. And of course, fight climate change. So I'm going to start with showing you some numbers. Do you know that food waste globally is a billion ton problem? And unfortunately, 61% of it is coming right our, from our homes. And this is followed by food services like hotels and restaurants, and then by retail like supermarkets and grocery stores. If you want to go and zoom more into the UAE, you know, in the UAE, we import around 90% of food here from different countries, from different locations. And we pay $6.4 billion on this import. And uh, unfortunately, again, we spend around half of this amount on food waste. So if you look on some averages on a personal level, in the UAE, per person per year, we waste around 327 kilograms of food. This is, if we talk about the whole UAE, this is equivalent to 3.7 million tons per year. And to, to help you visualize it a bit, we, we can equate it to the weight of 6.5 Burj Khalifas in terms of volume, and this is huge. So I want to talk to you about one of our favorite stories that we talk about at the Waste Lab, and this is the banana story. Why? Because banana is the most consumed fruit in the UAE. So basically, you know, the banana is not mostly grown here. We import it from Ecuador, from India, and from the Philippines. So it has to travel like thousands of kilometers to reach the UAE. And unfortunately, along the way, food loss happens from poor storage conditions, from it not looking good enough to come into our stores. So basically, as soon as it reaches us, per year, on average, one person in the UAE consumes, consumes around 78 bananas. And let's say we consume them all, we eat them all, what's left from the banana is the banana peel, and this is equivalent to 7 kgs. So these 7 kgs, you know, because we're, we're paying for the whole banana, this 7 kgs is equal to 27.3 dirhams that we are paying for it. And if you look, for example, at Dubai community, which is around 3 million uh, population, this is equivalent to wasting 81.9 million dirhams just on throwing these banana peels. So I'm showing you here three situations of banana. The first one, a perfectly looking yellow banana that you know, we consume and it has all the nutrients, the fibers, we pay, let's say around one dirhams to buy it and to produce only this banana, we have in agriculture to use 100 liters of water. The second stage is ripe banana, brown banana. And this is when the most weight stage happens, unfortunately, you know, when we see a brown banana, we say it doesn't look good. It's too ripe, we don't wanna eat it. And you throw it away. But you know what? It still has the same nutritious content, it's still, weighs the same, we spent 100 liters of water to grow it, and it cost us one dirham. And finally, this is where, what I want to also highlight, the peel. So the nutrients are also in the peel, and its, it's weight is 90 grams of the whole banana. We paid around 35 pills for it, and it used 39 liters of water. So basically, when we throw this banana peel, it's not really waste. We're still throwing something that has nutrients that we spent money on, that we spent water on. And this is in the weight club what we try to save most of the time, which is these peas that go and, and end up in landfills and cause a lot of problems environmentally, socially, economically. So let's say this banana went to landfill. And what happens? People sometimes think that decomposition, like a banana can decompose in landfill. And this is untrue, unfortunately. It decomposes at a super, super slow rate. And during this, it releases greenhouse gas emissions and methane. We usually talk about carbon, but actually methane is 25 to 28 more potent than carbon dioxide. And from this banana as well, leachates and toxins go into our water table and into the soil where we grow our food. So. What, is, what if we have another way? What if we don't want to waste the banana or the banana peel or any food that we produce and we don't consume and send it to landfill? There are other solutions out there. So we usually follow the food waste hierarchy. The first and most important thing is prevention. Prevention from our homes, from our restaurants, from anywhere where we first put our food. We want to avoid buying extra. We want to plan our meals 
And if we, let's say we produce more than what we need, we can always donate. We can give to the security guard, we can give to our friends, to our neighbors. So prevention is the most important. And the first thing we need to think of when tackling food waste. And if a human cannot consume it, we can always look at animals and, put, and use this as animal feed for, for, you know, for our cattle and like this. And then we can look at reusing and recycling. So we give a lot of tips like right now, this banana peel, for example, you think you cannot consume it, but actually we can use it, uh, we can grind it, we can use it in our cakes, we can create smoothies from it or chips, for example. So we always try to guide people to reuse and repurpose whatever that is normally thrown away. And let's say, okay, we don't have these solutions, we, do, we cannot do it, we always remain with some food that is left we compost, and this is what we focus on on the waste lab. So composting actually recovers these nutrients. Like I said, the banana peel still has nutrients. Instead of throwing it in landfill, these nutrients can go into our soil. And this soil will feed the plants that will then feed us. And last, last for us, like the last two are energy and the energy recovery, which is biogas and throwing in landfill, which is something we don't really want to happen. So to tell you a little more about the Waste Lab. So the Waste Lab has been here for around three years. We're based in Dubai and it is co-founded by two women, me being one of them. And our mission is really to make sure that no food ends up in landfill. And what we use are nature-based solutions. What we do in-house is composting in the most natural way possible. And composting, for those who don't know it, is nature's way of recycling food waste. It's decomposition. And the end result is compost. And compost is used for agricultural uh, purposes, for horticultural purposes, to feed the soil. And in turn, the soil will feed the plant to grow more food. So we focus a lot as well on behavioral change. So, you know, we want to move away from the linear way of doing things, which is usually we shop, we go to the grocery store, we shop, we cook, we eat, and then whatever is left over, we throw it in the bin, and this bin usually goes to landfill. What we want to focus and to try to adopt as much as possible is a more of a circular way of doing things, which is, first of all, we try to shop local and ugly. These bananas that don't look as nice or as pretty as, you know, the, the usual standards, they're still nutritious, they're still, still tasty. Why not support and buy them? And then again, we cook, we eat, we rip, and we try to repurpose any extras, any food scraps that we don't usually eat. We use them for an extra meal or we give them to someone else, for example. And whatever is left over, we separate. We try not to mix the food waste with other types of waste, like uh, plastics, metals. We keep them in a separate bin. And this bin, what we do in the waste lab, we collect it and we take it to our farmland where we do the composting. So this is the process we usually uh, follow with businesses. So we work a lot with hotels, restaurants, events. And uh, it's really crucial, first of all, when we approach them and they're looking for a sustainable food waste management solution is to train the staff on this segregation that I told you about. So they need to understand what goes into the food waste bin, what doesn't go. And of course, they need to know why they're doing this. Their, their understanding of the importance of this makes their actions more consistent and gives them the motivation that what they're doing really has an impact on the environment. So we train them, we give them the bins for the food waste segregation, and we have a logistical arm where we go collect the bins, take them to our control station. And in our control station, what we do is we do further segregation because, you know, mistakes can happen. Sometimes you put plastic or metal in the food waste bin, and this allows us to give feedback, for example, to the hotel for next time, please don't put these items and improve, improves and lowers their contamination rate. And we also, in the control station, we record data. You know, data is super important when it comes to prevention and to taking, you know, preventative measures. Once people understand how much really food waste they're, you know, uh, disposing in landfills and the impact that it has on the environment in terms of CO2 emissions and other climate metrics, they would really take responsibility and understand that, you no, know, this is something they need to do. And they can also, it's important to celebrate your efforts. Like we have one client who started with 20% contamination. Right now, it's less than 5%. Another client reduced in six months 20% of food waste from the source. And this is because we are giving them data re real time consistently, and they can track the progress and they can, like I said, celebrate their efforts. So, 
from the control station, everything that can go into composting goes to our farmland. We have a farmland on the border between Dubai and Abu Dhabi, and this is where we harness the power of nature. We use the sun, we use the microorganisms in the soil, and these microorganisms are, are, are our heroes because they are the ones who decompose this food and turn it into something beautiful, which looks like this. So imagine this is what compost looks like. It looks like rich brown soil. Like, uh, like I come from Lebanon and it reminds me of the soil smell once it rains for the first time. It is this beautiful and this is rich in nutrients and these microorganisms that can go into the soil and feed the soil. So why, are we, why do we focus on compost? Why in the waste lab we do something like this? So besides you know, diverting all the food from landfill, Applying compost to the soil, especially desert soil, you know, we, we live in the UAE and you think that desert is dead, that there's no life, that we cannot really grow our food locally. But actually, with the application of compost on the soil, we are changing the structure of the soil. We, can, we are building healthy soil. We are giving it the organic matter and the microorganisms for it to live and the oxygen as well. And with healthy soil, we will not need to utilize, you know, chemical fertilizers, which are harmful to us and to the environment. And with this also healthy soil, we can start talking about growing food locally and having more local resources. And, you know, like during COVID, we had this supply chain uh, problem. So why not start relying more and more on ourselves? And finally, what I want to say here is with healthy soil, we need less water for irrigation. And it's super important here because we live in a country that suffers from drought. So it means that we will need less water to irrigate our plants. And I want to show you here some metrics that we have achieved last year uh, with the waste lab. So in 2023, we rescued and diverted half a million kilograms of food waste from going to landfill. And this is a huge number because it is also equivalent to diverting half a million kgs of CO2. And we've been working with hotels, restaurants, offices, schools, and universities, because we, when it comes to schools and universities, you know, we always say like, we need to guide and educate the young people because they, will, they are the future. And they will also influence their parents to start taking some measures from their homes. So we offer a lot of workshops, a lot of engagement activities. Here we have uh, students coming to one of our compost stations where they are turning the compost pile, bringing their food scraps and creating compost. Here, this is one restaurant as well that has our bins. They are segregating their food waste and we continue the journey from there by creating compost and sharing data for them to improve as they go. And finally, like I said, donation is super important. We had one um, pumpkin rescue operation for Halloween where people gave us their pumpkins that would normally end up in landfill. And we donated the edible ones to the UAE Food Bank because why should we throw it away or even compost it if we can still consume it as humans? This is another project we did in Sustainable City Dubai. And what you can see, this is the same place. One is taken in December and one in June. And what we did here is basically we engaged the community, the villas that are living there. We rescued their food waste and composted in these stations. And in the middle of summer, you can see this is in July and the heat in the summer, we see nature. This is because we applied compost on the soil around the compost station and we allowed nature to flourish. And this is the power of compost. And this is what we want to achieve here. And finally, I want to show you our farmland. This is where I told you we do our large scale composting operations. These are our compost pods, and this is where all the magic happens. Thank you very much.